Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in, Casper here, and as you may or may not know, Valve recently added paid community mods for Skyrim as a feature into Steam, to much negative feedback from the gaming community. So much negative feedback, in fact, that only a few days later, they've scrapped the feature altogether. I actually believe that a way to pay for mods is a great idea, but I do think that Valve's model was off in a few places, and I'm here to tell you what I think could have been done differently to make this idea much less sucky. Woo! Check it out, Casper! Just in case you didn't know, a mod, or that's short for modification, is essentially a piece of DLC for a game that's been created by a fan, like you or me. So someone who's not directly employed by the company, and they're not necessarily a professional developer. Mods have always traditionally been free, although sometimes people will accept donations for these mods. There are a few critical errors with Valve's approach to this feature. One of these was the revenue share that was involved. The creator of the mod, so that's the fan in the community, the guy who's made this for fun, only got 25% of any revenue that was gained from this mod. The other 75% went to Valve and Bethesda, that's the company that makes Skyrim. Let's try and take a look at a couple of real life parallels to this that help put into perspective how this is just not the right share at all. A musician, so let's just say an acoustic guitarist or maybe an entire band, that person makes incredible music that entertains you, the listener, or obviously anyone else who does listen to it. It brings positive feelings to them and they do it in a professional way, so they've got high quality recordings. It's reasonable then to expect this person that wants to be paid because they put in hard work, they've created an asset that is valuable to the listener, and it's reasonable to expect the listener to want to pay for that music. So let's just use someone that I'm sure you've all heard of, let's just go with Taylor Swift for example. She makes music, she is an artist in that respect, I'm sure you might not all agree, but let's just let's put opinions aside on music and just, just say, she's an artist, she creates music, people pay for that. They're not paying for her or anything physical, they're paying for the art that she has created. Similarly, if we take a look at a graphics designer, say a drawer, uh, sounds a bit funny that word, a drawer, a painter, a photographer, anyone who creates visual art, they create that and obviously if it's a high enough quality, people will pay for that art and the artist expects to get paid for their hard work, their, their skill if you like. So if these artists who are using a skill to create entertainment value to other people get paid for their work, so should someone who's creating content for a video game, right? Here comes the bit that I think was messed up on by Valve and Bethesda. I don't think Bethesda should be claiming any percentage in this particular arrangement. Sure, I accept that Bethesda may have made the tools and the product which these mods are being created for, but they didn't have any real place in creating the mod itself. Taking a look at our parallels, in this case, Bethesda, they're the microphone that Taylor Swift sang into. Now, Taylor Swift has already paid the microphone manufacturer when she bought the microphone. When she sells a CD, she does not give any of that money to the microphone manufacturer. When she sells a download, she does not give any money to the microphone manufacturer. Similarly, the artist who has painted a picture, when he sells that picture, or she sells that picture, people who made the paint and the paintbrush do not claim any money for the selling of the painting. The modders have already paid Bethesda their bit when they bought the game Skyrim. That's the buying of the microphone, that's the buying of the paints. In fact, something on the scale of Taylor Swift, the microphone manufacturer might even pay Taylor Swift because they want someone with that amount of talent, or publicity at least, to represent their brand. And that's, in a way, that's what's happening with Skyrim. People who don't already own Skyrim, or people who have since bought Skyrim since it came out, since the mods have started existing for it, might buy it, might have bought it, because of the mods. People might think, okay, yeah, this game's great, but yeah, I'm not gonna buy it. But when they know that there's all this additional content, some of it at a very high quality, they're more likely to buy the game. In order to play any of these mods, if you want to play a mod that you've seen and you don't already own the game, the only way that you can play this mod is to buy the game. So if you really want to play a mod, then you've got to buy the game. So Bethesda are indirectly getting money from mods already. So I hope I've sort of made my case about Bethesda here, but you might be saying, okay, well, Steam are still claiming money. How is that fair? They didn't make the mods. Well, 
Returning to our parallels, Taylor Swift has to put her CDs on the shelves. Taylor Swift has to put her downloads on Spotify or whatever it might be. The artist has to put their painting in the um, gallery or their photographs in the gallery. Now without the gallery or without Spotify or without the music CD stores, which apparently still exist, those sales would not have happened. So in this case, the gallery or the downloading platform or the music store do claim a share. And this is exactly what Steam are in this instance. If Steam didn't exist, these mods wouldn't be on Steam to download. People wouldn't find these mods and they wouldn't be able to pay for these mods. So Steam is integral to this process. Without Steam, there would have been no sale. There would have been no money changing hands. So Steam asking to collect a share of this money, in my head, makes a lot of sense. And you'd see this in the real world, see the examples I just mentioned. But you might be saying, what about Nexus? This is a um, platform or sort of community that's existed for Skyrim mods for quite some time. And no, you're totally right. However, what I would say is that Nexus are totally within their rights to ask for a portion of any mods that are sold on their platform. So if somebody wanted to sell a mod on this Nexus community, Nexus would totally be within their rights to ask for a share of that, just like Steam are doing right now, just like Spotify will do if someone buys a song off it, just like an art gallery would do if someone buys a painting from them. So while the revenue share was quite a big problem with this, unfortunately the problems don't end there. There are a couple more changes to this approach I think would be required to make it accepted amongst the community. And one of these is the pricing. When this feature went live, prices were all over the place. There was tiny things like one cosmetic sword going for tens of dollars. And there was other things like massive levels, dungeons, audio changes, new monsters to the game that people were still giving away for free. It was just completely unbalanced. For this feature to work, the pricing would have to be regulated or, I guess, policed in some sense. They would have to make sense consistently across all the paid mods on the store. I'm certainly not a marketing or sales expert by any counts here. The sort of idea that I've got in my head is maybe they could be categorized, so cosmetic would be the lower sort of price area, gameplay features would be the middle sort of price area, or maybe Valve could do small, medium and large, but of course someone would have to go in and check these mods and analyze what's considered small, analyze what's considered medium, analyze what's considered large. And they would have to make sense consistently. So a sword or just one tiny cosmetic weapon that doesn't change the gameplay much, regardless of how much work has gone into it, it might be the most beautiful sword in the world, but the way it actually contributes to the game is smaller than something that adds a whole new map twice the size of the original Skyrim map, because that adds a lot more gameplay. I mean, that would have to be policed. People would have to go in and manually decide what is worth more because right now or rather when it existed the modder was deciding and what this simply led to was say there was a thousand people who made a paid mod that's a thousand different opinions on what something's worth and that is not going to work in the real world as we saw it would also have to be policed for the content of the mods there's quite a lot of people uploading other people's mods and that pissed a hell of a lot of people off very understandably so, that is 100% not acceptable. There was also a guy who made a mod, which I think it was a fishing mod, I think it was uh, Machinima who I've got this report from, so go check out their video if you want to know more about this particular case, but some guy made a fishing mod and he used another guy's mod, which was um, sort of movement animations, I believe. Now in the modding community, using someone else's mod in your mod is totally fine, because mods are normally free, but in this case, the guy who made the fishing mod, the whole mod, was selling the fishing mod, and the guy who made the animation mod wasn't seeing any of this money, and understandably, he was pissed off. So what would have to happen in this case is either there's an automatic feature or a manually policed feature that looks for these mods within mods, and there's a revenue share for those people who are on the sort of second level, the sub mods, if you like. Or they would have to be policed and say, unless you've got this guy's explicit permission to use his mod in your paid mod, it's got to come out. I think that would help to make it a bit more fair, and it would certainly be a step in the right direction for making this a lasting feature. Now, the very final thing that I think could be a change to this that would make it work is probably the safest thing that Valve could do. And that's to take the same approach to monetize mods in Skyrim or any other game that they take to Team Fortress 2 community updates. And that is taking some mods to be submitted to be official update releases. 
This would then give Valve and Bethesda a chance to review these mods in every respect that we've mentioned. It would give them a chance to check for other mods within these mods to make sure all the permissions are there. It would give Valve a chance to set the price point themselves or put them in as microtransactions like in the Valve store for Team Fortress 2 items where Valve decide the price of the sword that's in the official store. Valve and or Bethesda should be deciding the pricing of the mods or people should be locked into some sort of banding depending on the type of mod. And I'm not saying that free mods for Skyrim or any other game should stop existing. If a modder chooses to have their mod for free, carry on. That is great and that's what makes this gaming community so powerful that there's so many charitable people out there. YouTubers for example, a lot of people do YouTube for free and you watch YouTube because you enjoy it, it brings you joy, just like a mod would to a video game. A lot of YouTubers do this for free, I do this for free because, I mean, I enjoy doing it and then I enjoy the fact that other people enjoy me doing it. So yeah, mods can carry on being free, but anyone who would like to try and make some money off their mod because they put a lot of hard work into it and they feel like they deserve it, absolutely, they can submit that to Valve or Bethesda or whoever it might be, they will take the submission roll it into some sort of official update. So it could be a batch update with a bunch of closely related mods. So say there was a bunch of Halloween mods, a bunch of different people made for Skyrim. They could all come out around Halloween time in a big official Halloween pack, a fixed price of $10 or whatever. Or they could be a microtransaction store, just like the TF2 store, where there's all these little cosmetic mods or even big level mods, but the price point would be a sensible one, consistent, sensical one across itself compared to other mods on the store. So what do you guys think? As I always try and make clear, obviously this video is my opinion and I encourage you to speak to me if you disagree. I love a healthy debate especially like about a topic like this which has been so controversial up till now. Do you think my ideas to make this fair will work in the real world? Could you offer any improvement to my ideas? I'd love to know. Thanks everyone for watching, I'm Casper, I make weekly Team Fortress 2 videos so if you're not already a subscriber please feel free to stick around.